What's up dudes, Max here back with another update and something I've really wanted to talk about ever since the whole issue with Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, how it's being approached, how it's being addressed, and the fact that the landscape is really changing for fighting games right now, especially for tag-based fighting games. Really, the Marvel vs. Capcom series has kind of been the mainstay when it comes to tag team based battle, especially active tag battle, not something like King of Fighters 14, which has a character sitting on the side and you do choose one by one by one. A game where you actively have each one of the members of your roster go in and fight with each other at the exact same time. Really, there's not a ton of games that do that, and Marvel has had the mainstay for a long time. So it hasn't had a lot of competition. And Marvel Infinite with the situation that is in right now, I feel is that way because Capcom seems to have gotten kind of complacent the fact that they have the tag team championship in terms of big tag team fighting games and now Marvel Infinite is, well, the way it is. However, there was a huge change with everything. It, to me, it seemed like not everyone was really on board with the idea that Marvel Infinite was going to be a bad game before something like E3 happened, the graphics weren't looking great, and we didn't hear a lot about the roster yet, but the ones we did see was really worrisome because there was no X-Men. So there was, there was a bit of worry, but people were still kind of okay with it. It wasn't until one day when competition showed up, when a game showed up that all of a sudden made Marvel Infinite look weak as hell in comparison. Yes! Yes! We're done! We're fucking done! Dude, the animations on this are the, Oh my good. god! It, so it looks good. better than I thought it would. 3v3. 3v3. There he is! Yo! Oh my god! It's fucking Marvel! It's fucking Marvel, it's dude! Marvel, Let's baby. go! Fucking Marvel! In my opinion, on that day, everything changed. Dragon Ball Fighters pretty much represents everything that I absolutely love about fighting games and really is the complete opposite of what's happening with Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. While I still will defend a lot of the mechanics and the fun factor of Marvel Infinite, and I really do enjoy the game, especially because I spent more time with it, man, Dragon Ball Fighters just kills the game in almost every other regard. There is so much about Dragon Ball Fighters that is a huge preservation to the legacy of the characters and all this stuff that is just oozing for fans to eat up that it's, it's impossible to ignore that stuff. Even me, and I look at the game on a simple level in terms of its presentation and the mechanics and everything that we're seeing, it's just a spectacle to behold how awesome the game looks and is presented. It's, it blows my mind, and I'm not even a huge Dragon Ball fan, and it's making me a Dragon Ball fan by comparison. And then you get something like Marvel Infinite, and you put the two together, and it just is like, what the hell happened to Marvel vs. Capcom? It was really at that moment when Dragon Ball Fighters got all these nominations and was highly regarded as one of the best fighting games, the most successful fighting game debut at an E3 that has ever happened, where everyone was like, yo, we're gonna pick sides here. This Dragon Ball game looks amazing. This Marvel game, what the hell's going on? Everyone kind of shifted towards Dragon Ball, and that's the nature of good competition. And I don't feel that Capcom has really felt that kind of competition in terms of their versus fighting series, especially their tag team games, because Dragon Ball at that moment took all the thunder. Regardless of how simple the mechanics kind of are right now, and that the game is sort of streamlined for newer audiences where all the moves are just fireball forward and back, even with that in mind, people really don't care because everything about Dragon Ball looks so much better than a game like Marvel because Dragon Ball picks up where Marvel leaves everything else, which is the presentation and the graphics and the design. That is so important to a fighting game that not a lot of people consider it. Graphics and presentation really matter, especially when getting people into fighting games. But it's not just Dragon Ball. Just even recently, and this is my first opportunity to really talk about it, the Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle game was announced. Another Arc System game that is a tag team based style game that even looks more similar to Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite because I believe it's a 2 vs. 2 style game that combines the series of four different huge anime properties including Blaze Blue, Persona 4 Arena, Uniel, and then we have the Ruby series which isn't even a set of games, it's like an anime show. That That is like unprecedented, man. It's the, I'm not even super excited about this game, but just knowing the fact that that exists, that this game is like the Marvel vs. Capcom 2 of anime fighters now is really friggin' awesome, and even the fact that it's preserving the 2D legacy makes me feel really happy. But it's something that I'm just not super enthused about, simply because I never was into Uniel or Blaze Blue or P4AU uh, that much at all. 
It's one of those things where I'm super excited that a lot of other people are happy. It's just not really my cup of tea. But what brings it together is the fact that this is once again another competitor to the Marvel vs. Capcom tag series. It's another game that is literally going after MVC and what audience is there and what kind of Marvel vs. Capcom is leaving on the table with how the presentation is and the lacking roster. And really, one of the biggest things that Dragon Ball has, as well as Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle over something like Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, is its presentation and the characters. Blaze Blue Cross Tag is a game that's going to combine a ridiculous amount of characters from all these different series that always felt like they should be together, and now they're going to be together fighting each other. And then you get a Dragon Ball Z fighting game which is literally what people have been wanting from Dragon Ball for years now. They've always had these 3D-style associated fighting games for, man, it, what it seems like over a decade, and never a true hardcore 2D-style fighting game. And now that it's done in the fashion of a Marvel vs. Capcom game with assists and working together as a team and team mechanics, it makes everything else by comparison with how good it looks just look bad. This is actually bringing it back around to the Capcom side of things because I feel that this competition for Capcom Capcom and Marvel as they go on with the development of this game and hopefully start addressing some of these issues makes them realize that they're not the only guys in the market right now that are trying to do this stuff. They're going to have to try to one-up guys like Dragon Ball and later Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle because these games are going to be really big. Even though Blaze Blue, Persona 4, Uni, all these games have small, tiny audiences, put them all together and all of a sudden they might be much bigger of an audience that's going to invest in something like a ridiculous tag team based anime fighting game. Either way, I think competition is a fantastic thing, the same thing when it comes to video game consoles, same thing to fighting games and video game companies. It makes these guys that are kind of complacent in the fact that they know they're going to get a lot of sales, they know they're going to do well because they have their established fan base, all of a sudden realize, whoa, someone else is doing something way better than we usually are. We should probably try to take advantage of this as soon as possible. This is exactly why the reason I don't really get attached to specific things anymore, like a console or directly a fighting game. I like to play a lot of different stuff at the moment, and why it's one of the reasons why I consider certain games like Guilty Gear XR Rev 2 to be one of the most amazing packages out there, to consider games like King of Fighters 14, while its presentation is not amazing, does have a really, really good gameplay style and a ridiculous amount of characters. These games are good because they have been broadened by their competition, and I hope that other fighting games will take suit, and it's nice to see that even other companies like Mortal Kombat, for example, and the guys at Netherrealm, have even addressed it with their games. Even though their games were selling really well, they did make adjustments to their netcode to actually make the games play great online, which they didn't have to, but their competition was doing. They wanted to do it even though they were winning. So, like I said, competition's a great thing. It's gonna result in better fighting games in the long run, and I just hope, as a fan of Marvel vs. Capcom, that the Capcom guys and the Marvel guys will take note of this, and hopefully take heed to try to make Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite a better game. My god, it's hard to ignore how good Dragon Ball Fighters looks. Either way, dudes, thank you a ton for watching. I'll be back with more updates as soon as possible to all these games, and I'm definitely going to try out the Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle game. No guarantees that I'm going to love it, but I'll at least give it a shot because I know a lot of you guys are really looking forward to that game. As always, dudes, thank you a ton for watching. My name is Max, and I'll see you next time.